14th of October 1973 memorial which is very close to a democracy monument and it's a very solemn place and uh, I've just been looking at all the photographs and learning a lot about it. Uh, there's a very good um, timeline which goes hour by hour of all the events that happen on the day. Uh, there's also a lot of newspaper articles um, in English as well as mo majority of the exhibits are in Thai but it's uh, well worth reading, well worth coming and visiting and I've actually learned a lot. Uh, before I walked in here I didn't know about this event, I didn't even know this place existed uh, but now I've learned a lot about what happened on the uh, 14th, the 14th of October 1973. So this picture here is of the 13 pro-democracy protesters that were arrested and their house, houses searched and the protest was uh, demanding that they, they be released. So this is the student uh, leader Samsek and he was, this is him uh, making a speech about uh, trying to get the release of 13 uh, pro-democracy prisoners who were being held. This monument that I'm sitting in at the moment was actually uh, opened in 2001 and no one particular group has taken ownership. Uh, this was a combination between the then uh, government and the student group as well that created this monument. It was a public opening and the idea behind this was to share information about the event and to in particular remember those who lost their lives on that fateful day. So I'll do my best to uh, explain what I've just learned and read. Uh, basically, the, just to, to put you in context, uh, in the student life in the 50s and 60s went about a massive transformation in Thailand. In the, in the 1950s, student numbers were, were still low, were, were low but the students were actually considering different ideologies and they were started to get some kind of a voice and they wanted these different ideologies to be heard. So in the 60s and 70s, there was a massive transformation, in particular with student numbers. Student numbers grew from 15,000 to 150,000 within a, ten, a span of 10 years. So it was around this time where students actually started forming into groups. This is where I should introduce the NSCT, which is the National Student Centre of Thailand. So it was around this time in the late 60s where students from different universities would actually start to communicate and cooperate. So different to the idea of a student union, these were actually uh, representatives from all sorts of universities talking and cooperating and collaborating together and having open debates and discussion and discussing uh, different ideas. Now this group, which was, uh, they started, um, one of their first things that the NSCT did was send students into the rural areas to find out uh, what's going on uh, in the in the, in the outer regions, not what's going on outside of the city. Uh, and it was during this time that they become, they, they became, they, they realized that their education training and what was actually happening in the real world in rural Thailand, there was a big disconnect. So they were unhappy with their, their ed, the education system. So there are actually 11 different universities that were in this, in the NSCT, Thammasat University, Chalalagon University, um, also Slip, Slipakorn University. Coincidentally, Slipakorn was the architect who actually designed the Democracy Monument. And Slipakorn was actually an Italian-born gentleman who became a Thai citizen. And he was an architect and he, designed, he actually designed a lot of different monuments. The Democracy Monument, the, what's the other one called? Democracy Monument and the the Victory Monument. Also, he designed those two. So, he became uh, he started like an art and design university. So that's uh, Slippercorn. Anyway, the eleven universities got together and they formed the NSCT. Now, initially, the NSCT, uh, a lot of their activities were uh, in support and uh, were trying to promote. Uh, the the king and the, and the and the work of the royal family 
and in fact they produced a TV show which was uh, the main purpose was to praise the king. Now what was interesting about the uh, NSCT, the way it was structured was actually, the structure of it was kind of like, uh, was not a union and it was, wasn't a political party. The way it was structured was actually difficult for one person or, or a faction or a political group to actually influence it. Um, so it was actually a somewhat, in its initial early days, quite a harmonious and, 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 and equal organisation. However, this changed in, however, this changed in 1972. In 1972, an engineering student from Chalalagorn University, he began uh, some political activism within the NSCT and started to consider different uh, causes uh, to mobilize the, the, the group and to support or try to uh, bring about some change. It's kind of kind of eerie having all the uh, sirens going off in a place here, in, in this kind of a place, so it's kind of a bit surreal. Anyway, um, so the student, there was, a, there, was a, there was a group within the NSCT that was actually uh, wanted activism. They wanted to bring about some change. However, there were some conservative people in the group. So this is when the NSCT kind of broke into two different groups. The main two personalities of these two sides of the NSCT, uh, one's name was Sombat and the other one was Sex Sen. And uh, some believe the, the difference between Samsek and Sambot is very indicative and representative of what happens in today's politics as well, where groups uh, split. But I don't think it's just Thai politics. I think this happens in a lot of countries as well. One of the major events that happened with the NSCT was uh, a student-led protest of Japanese goods. And this happened in 1972. Uh, there was a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of people on board of this as well so at the time the political leader was not keen on any kind of activism or, or protests or demonstration however this had a lot of support from the people so the then Prime Minister uh, allowed it to happen because there was so much people support. I think a lot of sirens here of um, something's going on today. So the Prime Minister at the time, time, his name is Tanon. Now Tanon is a key figure uh, during this time, uh, during this time as well. And we'll hear more and more about him as the story continues. Now the NSCT actually had a lot of success with their anti-Japanese uh, demonstrations and movements and they, they organized a boycott of Japanese products. Now, empowered by this they, uh, and strengthened by this, they they took it to the next level and actually they wanted to draw their, their focus uh, was then shifted to the Prime Minister Tanon. So in 1972 there was another protest that was held in both in Chiang Mai University and Chalalukorn University. Now the protest at Chalalukorn University started there and then there was a march to Tamasat University. Now the government at the time, Tanon, did not like this and several people were arrested. Now in 1973, there were some students expelled from a university because they put on a satire which was offensive to the uh, ruling party at the time. And it was all about an event that happened. There was a helicopter, a military helicopter that crashed and uh, a famous film star and some military figures um, uh, lost their life and there was a there, there was an attempt to cover up this helicopter crash now the student the student group uh, the students didn't like this this kind of cover-up that was what was happening and some students put on a satire of this event that upset the government at the time the satire now as a result Tanon and his team got upset with that and they closed universities closed the universities so the NSCT uh, objected to this, they didn't want their university closed, so they organized a rally. Now these numbers for this rally grew to 50,000 50, uh, to try and get the universities back open again. And eventually the government relented and the universities were reopened. But it was at this point that the, the students realized they've actually gained a political voice. 
So they held the protest and it actually uh, brought about some kind of a positive change for them. So in uh, October 19, in October 1973, 11 students were arrested because uh, on the back of the strength of their protest, where they had, uh, where they brought about some change, they started distributing some leaflets uh, throughout the busy centres of Bangkok, and the and the government did not like this. So the 11 were arrested, and their houses were searched. And then on the 7th, and then on 7th of October, another another person was arrested, and on the 8th another, which brought the total to 13 people arrested for handing out uh, handing out brochures about. Uh, handing out uh, unsolicited barouches about the government and the ruling party. Following the arrest, 2,000 students protest. Now these protest numbers just grew and grew and grew. So numbers grew from 2,000 to 50,000. And then on the 12th, of, and then by the 13th of October, and then by the 13th of October, 400,000 protesters had gathered, demanding the release of the 13 prisoners. Now it wasn't only demanding, uh, it was not only students at this point in time, but members of the public also joined. Then uh, with, a four, with, a, with a protest a group of 400,000 strong, uh, Tanon uh, did release these prisoners uh, and that dispersed the crowd. However, it didn't disperse the whole crowd. So of the 400,000, 200,000 protesters went home. But the other half that were led by Saxen they marched to the royal palace because they wanted an audience with the king. So the king's representatives did meet the Saxen and uh, the result of that meeting was that the protesters were to finish and the protesters were to uh, disperse and go home. However, this is when the military intervened. Now the military set up some barricades because they wanted every, all the protesters to uh, disperse in one direction, in one way. Uh, and as, as you can imagine, with a group of 200,000 strong, this was going to be a slow and frustrating process. And this upset the, some of the protesters. So some of the protesters, they wanted some of the other exits to be opened. Now, no one knows actually how the conflict started. However, it was, it was, there was some kind of, this is what, what started the conflict. This, this is what started the conflict between the military and the protesters. And as a result, uh, things got well out of control. So this is when the conflict occurred, and this conflict, 77 deaths occurred and 857 injuries were as a result of the uh, conflict of the crowd, crowd dispersing. So as a result of these deaths, more protesters returned, and the protest size grew to over 500,000, and they were demanding that uh, Tanon be removed as the leader, and it was at that night that the king announced that Tanon had actually been removed as the leader. Uh, protesters were still not happy with that. It wasn't until Tanon actually fled the country that that actually brought an end to the, to the protests. So on the side of this monument are the names of the the students and it's it's a basically a lament of the parents who are who are waiting for their children their missing children to return home and these are the people who lost their lives during the protests the 76 who lost their lives so the spire here is uh, the aim is representing the ceaseless quest for democracy and if you look at the very top you'll see that it's actually clear at the top and the and the Definitely is something going on here today. A lot of, lot of sirens. So you'll see at the very top, there's a clear section at the apex, and that represent that is to represent the democracy as immortal.
that statue there is called Mother Earth Squeezing Her Hair. the Grand Palace in the distance. That's Suam Luang, the big park, really big uh, air space there, big park area. And then just over my shoulder here, we have a World War I monument. Initially, uh, Thailand, or the Kingdom of Siam, declared themselves neutral. But it was toward the end of the war that they declared that they were to help out and fight against the Germans. So a group of uh, soldiers were trained and sent to the war. And they arrived uh, three months before World War I actually entered. Uh, they were sent to the area of Rhineland, which was around the, uh, the, the bordering areas of France, Netherlands and Belgium. Uh, and they fought there for three months. 19 Siamese soldiers died in World War I and their ashes were brought here and are enshrined in this uh, memorial here. Uh, now the last surviving uh, soldier in World War I uh, died in 2003 at the age of 106. just came from the World War One memorial for the 19 soldiers that lost their lives in World War One and just here in the, the courtyard or at Tamasat University is a memorial uh, a monument here uh, which is all about uh, it's Thai's involvement in World War Two. Now it's a very good uh, document here that's in Thai and English and it talks about how the Thais maintain a position of neutrality. However, when the Japanese invaded Thailand and uh, there were some deaths, this enacted uh, the Thais to declare war. The document then continues on and it's a, it is a peace declaration. Uh, which has prompted me to find out a lot more in future video videos about World War II. I think uh, a trip to Kanchanaburi uh, is on the cards and a future video needs to be made of that because uh, I don't really know much, too much about uh, World War II and Thailand. So that's a future video. So on the side of the monument is a uh, it's all about the Seratai, the Seratai and their involvement in World War II. Now, here again, I don't know much about the Seratai movement, so I'm going to find out a lot more about those, and perhaps that'll be my future. It'll be a, a future video. 1932 Revolution. This is a monument here in the courtyard at Tamasat University, uh, and it's to commemorate the uh, reforms that happened and. Uh, in 1932 with the first constitution and it coincidentally is exactly in sync with the uh, democracy monument which we visited a little bit earlier. It's got the six pillars, there's six sides to it. Six main principles of democracy, sovereignty, education, safety, security and I can't quite remember the rest. But it's a monument in the courtyard here at Tamasat University, and it's not too far from the Democracy Monument, which is where we were earlier today. And that's where they had the six doorways or the gateways that were holding up the centerpiece and holding up the constitution on top of the two gold bowls. So it's a, ah, nice to find something and make, I'm starting to make some connections. I've been living here uh, in Thailand only a short time, but I like these little uh, aha moments where it's like, oh, okay, now I get it. So in the courtyard at Tamasat University, there are 
those five flame trees that were planted by King Rama IX back in 1963. And the flame trees, magnificent large trees, have a flower of red and yellow, a really flaming red, uh, which is really quite striking. So uh, the, the, the colors were actually, they're, they're yellow, the yellow and the red are actually the colors of Thomas Art University. The yellow represents virtue, and the red uh, represents the blood. So earlier we were at the 14th of October 1973 memorial and I talked about the events leading up to that event. Uh, sadly, the story didn't end there because there was another significant uh, event in the history of Thailand which occurred with university students and the loss of life once again and the memorial's just here in the in the area in the courtyard of Thammasat University and it's a really really striking memorial you can see a lot of the pain and the anguish on the faces of the uh, of the people in the sculpture uh, because this was a horrific horrific uh, horrific scene in Thai history where this was a kind of during a, a, a time when the uh, in the 70s where the uh, Vietnam the Vietnam had just became a communist country uh, the Americans have withdrawn and also uh, it was in the 70s with the, the, the and in, in neighboring country Cambodia it was Pol Pot and his Khmer Rouge uh, was ruling there so there's a lot of communist sentiment uh, that was here in Thailand and uh, there was Communism, communism, from what I read, never really took a strong foothold in Thailand. Um, however, there was a lot of events kind of surrounding an uncertainty in the 70s, which led to a lot of suspicion. Uh, and there was, a, yeah, it was, it was a, from what I read, it was, a, it was a nasty time. On the 6th of October, 1976, 45 people died. 40. 40 were the protesters and five were the um, perpetrators. Tanon was a key figure in the 1973 incident where many protesters lost their life. Uh, so he fled the country, but it was in three years later he returned to Thailand and was, went, was ordained as a monk. And then after he was ordained as a monk, he had an audience with the king which caused a lot of uproar. So there was a lot of protesters at the return of Tanon back to, to Thailand. Now, the years after Tanon left, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of political turmoil in Thailand. Uh, a lot of changing of leaders, uh, and there was the people who really suffered. There was a lot of um, electrical shortages, there was blackouts, there was financial issues as well with people so there was but there was also this was a juxtaposition with the what was going on in neighboring Vietnam uh, the end of the Vietnam War and what was also happening in Cambodia so it was a very unsettling and, and uncertain time now the theory is that the reason Tanon was brought back into Thailand was to actually create some unrest to create protests which would actually give the military a reason to stage a coup and so there was some allegations that the protesters put on some kind of a play a mock play which made the royal family which had some a member of the royal family in the play which is which caused a lot of unrest so after hearing of these accusations about this play the military came in and conducted a crackdown on the protesters as a result over 3,000 protesters were arrested. So as the military came in, either the, even some protesters who were trying to escape, who surrendered, uh, there were some lynchings that occurred. Some protesters were killed, some were burnt, some were, some were sexually assaulted, uh, bodies were desecrated. It was a really, really horrible scene. Some of the atrocities that occurred on that day, and this was this memorial, uh, you'll see some of the faces and the images that are, that are within that memorial that, uh, that are really quite shocking. And it's no wonder that this is a day that Thailand would rather forget. 
um, but they can't. This is part of the part of the history, and this is one of the reasons why this memorial is here, uh, so people will not forget. I'll remember the people that died on that day. There's a really good inscription that surrounds the uh, the memorial, and it's in Thai and in English, and it reads. What is most regrettable is the fact that young people now have no third choice. If they cannot conform to the government, they must run away. Those interested in peaceful means to bring about freedom and democracy must start from square one. Every year on the 6th of October, family, academics and politicians gather to remember those who lost their lives on this day. And they hope that this will never happen again here in Thailand.